Welcome back to another YouTube video. It's your tutor, Disha. And today, I'll be working questions two and three of the CSEC Human and Social Biology, July 2021, paper two. And the first part of question two says, figure one shows a diagram of a part of a food chain. And the corresponding question says, state what the arrows labeled a represent in the figure one. They represent the flow of energy or the direction in which energy and nutrients flow. Next part, state what is occurring at the arrow labeled B in figure one. Oxygen going to carbon dioxide. So this arrow represents the process of respiration in which food is broken down in the presence of oxygen into energy energy liberating carbon dioxide. Next part, identify the organism that is the primary consumer and the organism that is the producer in the food chain above. We're seeing here that organism X must be the producer, right? This is the organism that makes food available or energy available in the food chain. Organism Y is the primary consumer. That's the first set of organisms that are going to feed on the producer. Moving on, Stacy walks into her garden and sees mealybugs feeding on the leaves of her croton plant. To protect the plants, she introduces ladybugs to eat the mealybugs. Then Stacy becomes upset when she notices a frog eating her recently purchased ladybugs. Later that day, Stacy sees a garden snake eating the frog. And we're now required to construct a food chain to represent the information provided in the scenario above. All right, so let's take a look at my food chain. I recall that she had leaves of her croton plants. And then she recognizes the mealybugs feeding on her croton leaves. So here is my mealybug. And then here now, she, this is when she introduces the ladybugs to eat the mealybugs. So don't forget your titles, guys. Here is my title, A Terrestrial Food Chain. All right. A month later, Stacy finds the garden snake dead and decomposing in her yard. Name two types of organisms that would be responsible for the snake's decay. You can think about organisms on the microscopic level or on the macroscopic level. So microorganisms like bacteria and a prime example of a macroscopic organism that would be responsible for the snake's decay would be fungi. Next part. Stacy removes the dead snake from her yard and instead of throwing it in the bush, she buries it near the roots of her croton plants. Explain how Stacy's action would be beneficial to the croton plants. So remember, decomposition now is the breakdown of dead organic matter into its constituent inorganic contents right this would be so good for the croton plants in that when she buries the snake at the near the roots of the croton plants then after the decomposition of the snake the constituent inorganic nutrients are released into the soil near the croton plants and then these croton plants in turn will benefit from these organic nutrients yes Assimilate them, use them for mineral nutrition and growth. Next part, state whether or not Stacy would have the same number of snakes in her yard as frogs. This question now is testing your knowledge on trophic levels and the, um, and the availability of nutrients. So the answer is definitely no. Stacy would not have the same number of snakes in her yard as frogs. Now over to question three. It says figure two shows a cross section of the skin in the three layers here. It's in the epidermis, then the dermis, and then the subcutaneous layer or tissue. The corresponding question here requires you to label A and B. A is definitely the hair erector muscle. 
and b is a sweat gland because we see the sweat pore moving on complete the paragraph below by selecting two correct responses from the words and phrases provided in the box below and you can see here they give you some words or phrases negative feedback positive feedback control of body temperature, and childbirth. Let us read the paragraph. Homeostasis is the way in which constant conditions are maintained in the body, despite changes in the environment. When the body detects changes within its environment and produces a response to bring it back to normal, this describes a DASH mechanism. An example of this mechanism is dash so this question is testing you to see if you understand the concept of homeostasis right and homeostasis occurs in the body in two ways it can either be negative feedback or positive feedback now they gave you the definition here they gave you one of the ways in which homeostasis is carried out and based on this definition this describes negative feedback and the only example of negative feedback here is the control of body temperature because childbirth is positive feedback. State two responses which occur in the body when carbon dioxide levels in the blood increase. So when carbon dioxide levels are high in the blood, then guess what? The pH will shift to the acidic range and we don't want that. That's kind of bad for our, for our cells, right? So to counteract this, what the body is going to do is it's going to work in conjunction with the brain to increase our breathing rates, right? So we're going to be breathing faster in an effort to get more carbon dioxide out and more oxygen in so that we can shift that pH back to normal. Eventually, when your breathing rates increase, then what's gonna follow next is your heart rate will eventually increase too and those are two of several other responses that can occur when carbon dioxide levels in the blood increase next scenario a group of friends go to a party and drink excessive amounts of alcoholic beverages which are rich in carbohydrates after drinking they experienced frequent urination and the following day suffered from extreme thirst. Explain why the friends experienced each of the following. Frequent urination and extreme thirst. So the reason why the friends experienced frequent urination is because of the fact that alcohol is a diuretic which means that it promotes urination by inhibiting the production of the hormone vasopressin, which is involved in the reabsorption of water. Extreme thirst. So remember now, due to the presence of alcohol in their system, which we just said it was a diuretic, which is going to make them urinate more, they would eventually become dehydrated as the body is removing more fluids than normal next in addition to frequent urination and extreme thirst one of the friends pedro experienced dizzy spells and lethargy the next day state the effect that drinking alcohol beverages would have on pedro's blood glucose levels alcohol we know is a drink that has a lot of sugar in it and when pedro drink the alcoholic beverages it can interfere with his blood sugar levels so what's gonna happen is that his blood glucose level is gonna go up but then it's gonna drastically decline right and along with lowering his blood glucose levels the alcoholic beverages they're gonna also interfere with the hormones needed to maintain the sugar levels Right, and because of his alcohol consumption, it impairs his liver's ability to release glycogen, which prevents his blood glucose levels from being too low. And the next part, explain how Pedro's body would respond to eliminate the effect stated. So, so what's the body going to do to counteract that? It's going to work to eliminate the alcohol in its system. 
in conjunction with the excretory system, right? And once the alcohol is out of his body, then his liver will regain the ability to release more sugars and bring back his sugar levels to normal. And then lastly, you are required to suggest the disease that Pedro is most likely suffering from and state why he would have experienced dizzy spells and lethargy. So let's look at what Pedro is experiencing. He's experiencing urination, extreme thirst, plus dizzy spells and lethargy. These are typical hangover symptoms, but since we're suggesting these symptoms are close to diabetes. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for the corresponding human and social biology review videos.